Hey class, welcome back. Uh, this is our lecture on Pro Tools. This will be a, a real fun one. Really love me some Pro Tools. So let's uh, let's see uh, let's see what we got here. So first off, I want to go over some common shortcuts because when you're first getting started, you know it seems like a big, you know, open platform. But it's really you know it's pretty simple. Uh, you just want to get real quick with it. So the quicker you can get with it, the more simple it'll be. Uh, the more quick you'll be with it, the more you can you know make money on it, which is pretty cool. So some quick shortcuts that you know I want you to kind of get familiar with because uh, you're going to wind up using them. Not every session, but some of them pretty much every session. So the first one, uh, let's pull up our Pro Tools so we can kind of go through them uh, at the same time. So we got Pro Tools pulled up. We can create a new session. So that would be Shift, or so it's, it's Command N. So with a, uh, that's gonna be with our Mac. So if we have a, uh, a Mac, we're gonna use uh, Command N to create a new session. Uh, with a, uh, a PC, we're gonna use Control N. Let's see, so when we do that, it's gonna allow us to create a new session. Uh, but again, I've already got one, so uh, whenever you create one, you just wanna make sure that you've uh, got it titled, correct bit depth, sample rate, and the location is one that you can find. So I'm gonna go uh, just to recent, and I've got one created here for us. Cool. So that's a quick uh, one for uh, command in, new session. Shift command in. This is a big one. This will save so, so many hours. I, I love it. It's definitely a good uh, functionality. So again, in a PC world, we're shift control in. So any commands effectively just become shifts. So if we do a shift command in, uh, we're gonna get this dialog box to pop up. This allows us, again, we've, we've used this in the past, but it allows us to pick our tracks, whether we want them to be stereo or mono, or the number of tracks, whether we want them to be stereo or mono, um, what kind of track, uh, and then we can create. Um, however, for this particular uh, uh, lecture, I'd like to do what we call import. So let's do some of that. That's a shift command I. That's that's what we're not going to be recording it. We're going to use a, something that's already been recorded. Um, so I'm going to take a, a master from one of our other uh, classes that we've had and import that. So let's go back to Pro Tools, shift command I. So when we do that, it, we are importing audio. Um, we can always do that by coming up here. Uh, let's see. Cancel action. We always come up to the top, you know, do a uh, file import audio, and that's also again where we can find our Control Shift I, Command Shift I if you're in uh, on a Mac. So here we can uh, import a a, uh, a master file that somebody recorded. Or one, this was actually another audio class we recorded uh, and mixed down. Uh, because this has been recorded and mixed down into 16-bit 44.1, in our particular session is 24-bit 48 uh, cycles per second, or 1,000 cycles per second, um, I'm going to convert the clip. I'm not just going to add the clip. I want to convert it because I want it to be in the right format for our session. So we'll convert that clip, and then done. I'm going to tell it I want it to save in my audio files associated with my session. So I'll click yes use current folder then processes that audio it takes just a little while but not too much we're just con converting again that 16 bit to 24 bit 44.1 thousand cycles per second to 48 thousand cycles per second once it does that it's gonna ask us do we want to put it on a new track uh, or uh, create a clip list for this uh, exercise let's do uh, create a new track so as you see here here's our track we can uh, get to our mix window if we want to take a look at it. That's control equal, command equal if you're on uh, on Mac. So it's going to show us our, our pre-recorded track. Uh, I want to go ahead and set our inputs and our outputs. Again, for my, uh, for my mixer, I'm going to want to use uh, Pro Tools out 3 and 4 so that y'all can hear it. So let's get over to Pro Tools out 3 and 4. Record will start us at the beginning, so if I press record, it'll take my spacebar to the beginning if I'm not already there. Just as an example, spacebar or enter 
uh, or return allows us to go to the beginning. Spacebar will play. So let's, uh, let's play a little bit of this for us. Cool. So we're getting audio through. Let's uh let's go back to our uh, our slideshow. Let's see what else we got in here. Command E. So this is a big one. You're gonna wind up using this quite a bit. I really like Command E. Um, just makes for uh, quick, simple edits. I like to think of E for edit. It's really it's making a cut, but you know it it creates an edit point. So that's how I I'm able to remember that. Um, Command E or Control E for the PC users. So let's zoom in and out. I'll get to our zoom function here in just a little bit. Uh, it's effectively it's command brackets. Um, but what we can do is we can come in uh, and find a particular s section. Um, you know, if we wanted to create an edit point, let's just just press play here and find a good edit point. Cut that out before that acoustic guitar. So the acoustic guitar is going to come in here. Let's see. I think it's this one here. So I can use my fun little tab to transient. If this uh, little box is lit up, we're going to be our tab to transient. So if that is selected, that's not selected. That would be selected. Whenever I press my tab, it allows me to tab over to the nearest transient. So if I'm over here, tab, it's going to go to that transient. Uh, or let's see, it's over here. You can kind of, you can kind of go through the transients there. So I'm going to do a Control E or Command E, sorry, if, depending on uh, which operating system. And you notice that created a, a separation. So I'm able to now I've got this part over here and I've got this part over here. So this one could be. You know, it's right when the guitar comes in, the acoustic guitar. Um, if I, uh, if I want to uh, put those back together, let's say I, I didn't like the edit that I just did, um, that would be uh, Command Z, uh, or in PC that's Control Z. So it allows me to put that back together. And I can also uh, heal that separation. If it was the last thing I did, I can always Command Z it. Uh, or if I create that separation here, I'll, I'll do it again, Command E. I can always highlight that selection and then do Edit heal separation, uh, control H. So I can do a control H, command H for the, the Mac users, and it'll heal that separation. So that's pretty cool too. So now we're back to having one big solid piece. Cool. So another fun one is duplicate. So this one allows you to uh, quickly uh, make a duplication. Let's say you've got a drum loop, sounds really good. You're like, okay, that's the jam, I wanna loop it. Uh, just highlight it, Command D. That's a pretty simple one. I'll just kind of show us an example of that. So let's just say I wanted to duplicate this song. Command D, boom, two songs. Pretty cool, pretty simple. Again, Command Z to undo. And another big one, Command S. Uh, that's save. You want to do it as often as you possibly can. I definitely recommend it. Um, so again, we'll go back to our Pro Tools. Let's say, okay, this is the jam. I really like it. We're, we're done, or I'm in the middle, and I'm about to move on. I, I want to make sure that I can come back to this point. Do a little Command S, and it should save. So we can come up here to File. Now, my it save has been uh, kind of grayed out because I've already saved. As soon as I do another edit and I can go back up, you can see that I could save it again if I wanted to. So if I moved it around, then I could, you know, again, Command S, saved. Pretty cool. And, cool, so let's move on. Edit modes. So once we've, we've now got a track uh, all imported and stuff, so now we can kind of start editing them. The thing about editing is your, your mouse is gonna do different things depending on what kind of edit mode you're in. Um, so as you can see, this is kind of our different edit modes. You can find that within our Pro Tools session. Um, 
right in oh, kind of in behind my face here just right in here this allows us to select between our different modes um, modes are going to effectively just mean what what is this thing doing so if I am in slip mode that means I can click anywhere I'm non uh, confined which is cool so that means I can move this guy just about anywhere I want to along the timeline if I zoom in kind of see those kind of these little grid marks but they don't matter I can click you know anywhere in the middle I can get them lined up at the front of one I can do what, whatever I want anywhere I want that's slip mode the next one's gonna be shuffle what it does is it pushes uh, all the way to the front of a region uh, this one's great for uh, radio things where you need to get rid of any silence uh, so I really like that one uh, so let me just kind of show you an example of that let's just say we you know chop this thing up somewhere again command E create a separation if I am in slip mode you know shuffle I got to put it wherever I wanted if I was in shuffle mode and I got to move this thing around you know let's see let me create a new track so they can shift from track to track that's where it really takes place take starts taking shape uh, let's see shift command N Shift command in that pops up our dialog box. That is going to be a stereo audio track create. So if I move him down here, he's going to notice he's going to move to the front. But if I was to move him back up here, he's going to bump right up to the to the back of the other one. I can't move him anywhere else. That's the only two places I can put him is either butt up to that one. Uh, you know, I can't move him over here. I can move him back down here, but that's the only two places I can put him because he always moves to the to you know to the butt end of the last region so so if that other region ended here that's where he's gonna gonna go butt up to so again I could slip move him, move him around but if I want him to kind of go ahead and line up not leave any gaps you know I could move him down there move him back up here or actually sorry go back to shuffle mode move him up here and there's only one way one place I can put it all the way you know to the end of this one uh, cool. So the next one, it, oh, let's go ahead and heal that separation there while we're at it. Oh, and we're in shuffle mode. So let's go back to slip mode so I can select wherever I want to. A little control H, heal that separation. So now let's go to grid mode. So grid is going to match to the grid, whether it be in seconds or in tempo. Uh, we can we can dictate that, which is cool. So with that, we can go up here to grid. And let's zoom out a little bit, click in on the beginning, zoom back in. And you'll notice when I go to move him around, I can't move him in between the grid. I can only move him to the grid. So I can put him there, put him there, put him there. Again, these blue lines, these are our grid. So you know, I can put him to that one if I wanted to, put him to that one. If I want to change my grid, I come up here to, to my grid uh, and I can select here whether I'm in my main counter selector. He can select whether I'm using minutes and seconds or whether I'm using bars and beats. Um, for this particular one, because we aren't you know time aligned, we don't really have to go to bars and beats. We could do minutes and seconds. But just as an example, you can see here bars and beats if this thing was uh, truly, you know, you know, if I put the grid to the actual beats per minute of the song. They would line up a little better. You'd see, you know, the grid would line up with, you know, the quarter notes would be on the quarter notes. Um, so here is where we can do our grid value. So with here we can be either half notes uh, or we can be quarter notes, which is usually a pretty good standard to start from. We could even go down to eighth notes if you notice. So that way I can go in between. I can do eighth note changes. You know, even all the way to sixteenth note changes. But again, I always have to be on the grid if I'm in grid mode. So again, slip would allow me to go wherever I want to. I can go right in between the grid if I want to with slip mode. So again, grid has to go to the grid. And then, let's see, in shuffle, of course, that's going to bump it all the way to the beginning if we changed it. And let's see what else we got. We've got spot, I believe. Yes, spot. Spot is going to place the sound beginning at a specific time. 
So that's a good one for, let's say you're, you've are you got a director and he tells you that he wants the gunshot to happen at exactly minute two. So you would you'd load your gun sound, you'd import your gun sound, uh, and then you would go to spot mode. You'd go to move this guy around. And as soon as you go to move him, all of a sudden this spot dialogue uh, uh, little window pops open. So what that does, it allows you to select whether it be time code, minutes and seconds. Again, you, if your director told you you wanted it started exactly two, two minutes in, he wanted this song to begin it. So we could select start time, two minutes, okay. And you'll notice that exactly two minutes in, that's when our song starts. So that's a cool one too. Again, uh, you know, that's good for if a director, you, a lot of times they will just write out what sound they want and what time they want it. You know, it might not be the exact time, but it's, you know, real close. So you then just drag and drop, load them in, uh, you know, use that uh, spot mode to go exactly where you need them to go. And then you can kind of tweak them to get them just right, which is cool. You know, be a little more creative. Um, cool. So let's, uh, oh yeah, another fun thing. Uh, is our tilde key. That's the this little guy. You can usually find him just below your escape uh, on your keypad, uh, just above tab. So if I back over in my uh, Pro Tools, if I use the little tilde, you notice I, I'm going through my different modes here. Just a quick, simple way of going through your modes. Cool. Tools. So now that we've uh, established that, you know, obviously the mouse can do different things based on uh, what what edit mode we're in, uh, your mouse can all do, also do different things depending on what tool you have chosen. So let's uh, let's kind of start with that. Uh, uh, here is where you can kind of see your tools. So if I go back to Pro Tools, you'll notice that we have our tools located in this section here. So. Usually I like to use what they call the multi-tool. That's where if you click in on this area right here, this little gray box on the outside uh, of these three items here, you get what they call the multi-tool. The multi-tool is pretty cool because he's gonna be the selector, the grabber, the trimmer tool, and the fade tool, and a crossfade all in one, which is pretty cool. Um, the selector, uh, um, so what I, what I mean by that is, depending on where you're at on the track, you're gonna be doing different things. So let's just come here. I've got my multi-tool selected, so that would be just my selector tool, that's just my grabber tool, that's just my trim tool, this is my multi-tool. So this is gonna allow me to do a lot of fun stuff at, at, at one time. So with with that, we've got our this little kind of eye here. This is our selector tool. He just allows us to make a selection. So if I was just the selector tool, I could come here, make a selection. It's it's good for picking, you know, a spot in time, uh, you know, just making a selection. If I wanted to do an edit, I can select in there, tab to wherever I need to, you know, do my command E, do my, you know, my edit wherever I need to. Um, so selectors are pretty cool. Uh, the other thing you've got is your grabber. Your grabber is going to allow you to grab and move around. Uh, and then you've got your trim tool. The trim tool allows you uh, to non-destructively trim. So I could. You know, I could trim that bit out, and then you're like, oh, you know what? I, you know, like back in the day, you, you know, that'd be on the cutting room floor. Well, nowadays we're non-destructive, so we can pull that right back, and I've got the whole song again. So that stuff is just kind of living in our this little area over here. Um, but either way, we'll get to that. Um, so uh, our trim tool, we can trim the beginning, we can trim out the end. Um, cool, but again, I really like the multi-tool, because check this out. With the multi-tool, depending on where you're at in location, I could be my selector tool, making selections, and my grabber tool, where I can move stuff around. I can go to the corners, or the edges, I mean, and become my trimmer tool, so I can trim in and out, both sides. Uh, but it also adds this functionality. We've got a fade-in tool, neat. You can double click on that and pops up a dialog box. You can adjust your fades accordingly, however you need to. It's pretty fun. You can always go and delete your fades just by clicking on them, delete. Uh, we've got fade outs. So you can do a fade out. Again, double click. It's just gonna open the dialog box, see our fade out. We can adjust that as necessary. 
And again, if we don't want it, we can always delete it. Um, cool. So that's uh, that's our multi-tool. Really love the multi-tool. Um, let's see what else is in here. Ah, some crossfades. So, so check this out. If we were to have, let's say we've got this track and we want a, uh, uh, you know, let's just pretend like we've got two separate songs here. So we'll make a selection, maybe zoom in a little bit. Maybe I'll, I'll chop this up, zoom in a little more. We'll do tab, transient tab, tab. Maybe I'll chop them up right there, do a command E, do a little chops. Now I've got these two separate pieces. Well, let's just pretend like these are two separate songs and I wanted to make these form into one. Uh, that's where the crossfade would come in. So I could either do a fade out of this one, fade into that one, or I could do a crossfade. It's where I come to this to the center of a uh, an edit point, uh, and it allows me to you know, zoom in a little more. Uh, to come in, you notice it, it has this kind of uh, you know a crisscross kind of shape to it, uh, and I'm able to effectively do a crossfade. It's kind of neat. Obviously, the edit's going to be clean because it's you know all part of the same song. But as you can imagine, that can become really useful when you're trying to make one song fade out into the other. Again, we'll do uh, Command Z to undo. And we've got the escape that allows us to cycle through the tools. So that means we can use our tilde to go through our edit keys, and we can use escape to go through our tools. That's fine. Zoom. So obviously you're going to use zoom a lot because it, it allows you to kind of get in and out and, and get to where you need to and make your edits where you need to. So uh, command bracket, uh, close bracket is going to zoom in. Command open bracket is going to zoom out. So I can show you an example of that. So let's just click in. It's going to always uh, kind of zoom to the selection. So if I'm selected the beginning or the end, uh, or even somewhere in the middle, I'm going to do command open bracket to zoom out, command close bracket to zoom in. And what's cool is you can actually hold your, your thumb in place as you're doing that. So, you know, so I, I usually will kind of call it my, my claw, you know, so I can hold, you know, control with my thumb and use my pointer finger to, you know, either zoom in or out. Um, you know, so that's, that's pretty, pretty simple. Definitely try that out. Because it's way simpler than coming up here to your your tool, your zoomer tool, and then you have to literally click, 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 and then you want to go out. You've got to come over here and make your yourself, you know, like the opposite. I think you got to like hold like, yeah, hold alt alternate or option to zoom out. You know, so that's cool and all, but I uh, I I prefer the uh, command brackets. That way, I can just stay as my multi tool and do my zooming in and out. Um, cool. So there is also an option F uh, that zooms to the entire selection. So let's try that out. So if I make a selection, option F, it's going to highlight, it's going to zoom in just to that selection. Um, I can also zoom to the entire session, which is uh, option A or alternate A if you're in the windows and it's going to zoom to the entire selection just cool too you know that's for like let's just say for whatever reason you got something living down here you know minute 10 you do a little alt you know alt A and then you can tell if you got something living back there and you can kind of go delete it if you need to And your windows. We've talked about this a lot, but I just kind of want to just kind of give you the uh, how to get between the two without having to go up to you know the top bar. You know, I'll show you two different ways of doing this here. Let's get back to our Pro Tools. So we've got um, where we can either go window. Uh, right now we're in my edit window. I can go to my mix window. You know, just quick and simple. Just window. Tell it what window you want to be in, or you do uh, control or command equals. Real simple. So 
just uh you know I just, you can just again you can hold your thumb on control just press the equal and you'll go back and forth you know and again this is our our window for doing our editing this would be you know again command equal this would be for doing our mixing where we've got our faders and we've got effects and different things we can add on there Markers. So markers we've talked about a little bit in class, uh, but I just want to show you how to actually use them. Uh, so what they do is they allow you to locate a, select, a section with ease uh, and allow you to differentiate the different parts and sections. Um, ultimately to create one, you just click the little plus on the marker track and it adds markers. Pretty simple. So we'll show you that real quickly. So we've got uh, Pro Tools. Let's go to our edit page. And so here you see our markers track. So, you know, obviously at the very beginning, you know, we, we could do one right there. What's going to, it's going to create a marker wherever your selections at. So I just pressed return to go to the beginning, press the plus. It's going to pop up this little dialog box, which I could go ahead and label this as intro, you know, okay. So we've got our intro there and we could listen to the song and, and, and as the song plays, uh, if you have a, a number pad, you can actually go ahead and just press enter as the song's playing and it will create uh, uh, markers for you. So I'm just kind of show you that as an example, like right here before the pre-chorus. Again, they're just real simple ways of us finding uh, where these different parts are in, in the song. Um, you can either do it again while you're playing, or you can just go to the part and you know make a selection, hit the plus, and then a little dialog will pop up. Um, you know we can cancel here maybe because I know this is the pre-chorus here, so it'll go ahead and add a pre-chorus there. And uh, then we can easily get in and out of our parts. A lot of fun. Um, a quick shortcut on that, you can always click in on it. It will tell us uh, which number uh, of which memory marker we're using. So with that, we can always do a quick, uh, uh, let's say I want to go to number two. I do period, two, period. All of a sudden, it'll automatically go to my pre-chorus. Chorus is number three, so I do period, three, period. Go straight to my chorus, go to my verse, period, four period goes my verse so again those those definitely come in handy well, awesome guys I, I really hope y'all enjoyed uh, this week's lectures uh, please let me know if y'all have any questions and again I look forward uh, to seeing y'all soon uh, and uh, thanks again